This has four terms. Again, I could have up to three solutions on this one, but four terms we must solve this one, or we must factor this one by grouping. When we factor by grouping, again, it's important that we have everything in standard form, standard meaning highest degree down to lowest. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to separate these into two different groups. I'm going to find the GCF of each group. Now pay attention right here because that sign needs to stay no matter what. So let's look at the first group, x cubed and 3x squared. What's the GCF of those two terms? Just x squared, which means I'll divide this by x squared and divide this by x squared to give me x plus 3. Notice this sign will stay here. I'm looking at negative 4x and negative 12. So I'm going to take out the GCF, which is negative 4. I've already written my negative, so I'm going to write my 4. When I divide this by negative 4, I get x. Negative 12 divided by negative 4 is positive 3. Now, ideally, when I do that, you will end up with two binomials that are equal. If that is true, then that means that's a common factor, a common term to those two. So in the same way that I could take an x out of both of these terms because it was a common term, I'm going to take an x plus 3 out of these two terms because it's a common term. So I'm going to write that x plus 3 as a common term. And what am I left with? x squared and minus 4. That's what I'm left with. So these two come together and these two come together. Now, whenever I have a degree that's greater than 1, I might be able to continue factoring. This looks like a difference of squares pattern, two terms that are perfect squares being subtracted, which means x plus 3 stays the same. This turns into x plus 2, x minus 2. And now that everything is to the first power, I'm going to set each term, uh, each binomial equal to 0 to find the three zeros. So my three zeros, setting this equal to 0, um, would give me negative 3, this would give me negative 2, and this would give me positive 2. So those are my three solutions. Notice this one is very similar to the one that we just did, but it's go also going to be very different by the time we get to the end. I'm going to start the same way, factoring by grouping. Keep in mind that's going to be a plus. Again, x squared comes out of both of those terms, giving me x plus 3. In this case, a positive 4 comes out of both of those, leaving me with x plus 3. And I'm going to do the exact same thing I did before, x squared plus 4 with a common factor of x plus 3. And now this one, the, this is the problem. This does not factor into x plus 2, x minus 2 because I have a plus here. There is no sum of squares pattern. So that means that's as far as I can factor. So setting this equal to 0 and setting this equal to 0 will give me my zeros. What's going to be different here is we're going to end up with some imaginary solutions on this one. So subtracting 4 from each side gives me x squared equals negative 4. Taking the square root of each side gives me x equals plus or minus 2i. So imaginary solutions. Over here, I would subtract the 3 and get negative 3. So my solutions would be positive 2i, negative 2i, and negative 3.